Hello, I am Terry, and I am a full-time eBay seller. I have been selling on eBay for about a year and a half. I would say real serious about it for just a little over a year. I was actually able to quit my job and just do eBay full-time. Um, I love it. And I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. When I first started, I thought I had a niche for certain items. Like I really was in love with collectibles like glass and pottery and things like that. But I quickly realized that I don't know enough about them and realized that I could pretty much purchase anything I wanted to that would make me a profit. So I sell so many different things. I don't let anything get in my way unless it's really, really big, like a bike or something like that. But I do still ship quite large things like older uh, like gaming televisions, uh, lots of, uh, stereo receivers. I have in the past have shipped out, uh, model airplanes. The boxes were about six feet long. So there's always a way to ship them. You shouldn't let the size get in your way at all. You will find the right box. A lot of times I have actually just created my own box. Today I wanted to um, show you what has sold in the last, I think it's been about a week. First up is the JVC. It is a DR-MV150B. It is a dual DVD VHS player. This one I picked up for around $5. I believe I got it at an estate sale. It was actually sitting on my shelf for quite a while and I think I forgot about it. And so I pulled it out, tested it, added some cables to it. I had the manual for it. I did purchase the um, remote for it online, which was I think $11, $12. But just adding a few extra things that you might already have or have to order just couldn't really help with the sale. It just makes the package look a little more complete. So I paid around five and I sold it for $200. And I think that took about a week. So next up is this Patience Brewster Kringles Department 56 Ceramic high heel cake plate. Um, I went to an estate sale probably about four or five months ago and bought lots of Hot Wheels, um, lots of different kinds of cars and, you know, like always just some random items. Um, did not see this, but I was planning on going back for the last day of the estate sale when everything was going to be half off. And this house was just filled with all kinds of different things. So I went back and I had already gathered quite a few things, bought more Hot Wheels, more cars and sewing machine, bought all kinds of stuff and almost out the door when I saw this box in the corner and saw that it was a Department 56 and looked, did a quick um, eBay search on it to see if there were any comps on them and on it. And there were quite a few uh, sold comps that were really high. I picked this up. I did an average of all of my items that I had purchased. So I ended up purchasing this for $6.17. I will do that when I purchase a lot of items. I will just do an average of what I paid for each item. And I sold this for $157.49. It's just adorable little um, cake plate, as you can see in the photo. So next is this uh, pocket watch. 
it says dad's pocket watch on it, I think. Bought this at a little estate sale that was down the road. Somebody was just putting on their own estate sale. Paid $5 for it and sold it for $30. Um, next is a book. It's Agatha Christie Mystery Collection. I paid 25 cents for it. Kind of took a chance on it. I don't usually sell too many books unless they're book sets, which I love. So I did end up getting $8.99. I've only had this for a few weeks, probably listed. Next up, I have a, um, it's a LGB train station house kit. And I had purchased quite a few LGB train items, which sold very quickly. I had most of them on auction and they sold in the first week of the auction. This actually is one of them, this train right here. I Somebody purchased this also, and they said when they turned it on, it made a really loud screeching noise. They bought it for $500. And so of course, um, I refunded them. They sent it back. Um, and I went, I just picked it up today from our local train supply place in Portland, uh, whistle stop they're called. And so they had gone through the whole thing and it really just needed a lubrication job on it. And so that cost me $17 and 50 cents. I was very happy about that. So the one that um, I just recently sold was one of the few things that was left. And this was a train station house. And it is called a Pola LGB 907 Silverton Railroad Express Train Building. And I did an average price on all my items that I picked up when I picked up all my LGB stuff. And so this all each item was $14.28. And this one sold for $157. So all of those LGBs have been such a great purchase and such a great profit. So this one, again, um, I will list it probably today or tomorrow, and I think it will sell pretty quickly. And it turns out that it's actually a little bit more expensive plane, train that is inside here than what it says on the box. So that's all good. I'm happy about that. Um, next is I sold this lot of five um, 52 millimeter Nikon color filters. They're vintage. Um, I sold them for $49.95. I bought this in at an estate sale in a pretty big lot of items. So I probably have maybe $10 into this. I don't even think I paid that. I th for some reason, $8 is coming to mind. Unfortunately, when I shipped this off, I shipped off two other packages of lens covers to him and he reached out to me and said that I gave him too many items. So I sent him a label and he sent the others back, which was super nice. Um, and I just received those today. It only took a couple days to get those back. So I was very happy about that. Um, a few weeks ago, I went to an estate sale and picked up this, um, uh, it's the second world war Winston Churchill, a set of six books, vintage. I paid $30 because they were $5 each and I sold them for $109.99. Next, I sold this peacock figure that I had purchased from an estate sale for $10 and I sold it for 45 and it probably took a couple months to sell. Next is this um, set of four audiobooks I had purchased about six, seven, eight months ago. Could have been longer ago than that. It was before the pandemic. Somebody had posted on um, the marketplace, Facebook marketplace that they had, I think it was 600 
audiobooks for sale and they did have books as well that I really wasn't that interested in but they wanted to sell the whole lot and so I think I picked them all up for a hundred dollars so I think it was 600 audiobooks and three or four hundred books so I had nine to nine hundred to a thousand uh, units for a hundred dollars these audiobooks were all brand new and packaged and I brought them home. I started grouping them together and they just flew off my shelf. So if you have a chance to pick up audiobooks that are new and packaged, even if they are not, they still sell really well. So I would definitely pick those up if you ran across them and they were a great deal. So this particular one I sold, there was four of them. I just have a few left and they're not as popular. And so this set of four sold for $9. But again, I think I only paid about 23 cents for each audiobook. So next is this Marks, M-A-R-X Railroad Crossing um, tracks and the little arms that come down and the bells, um, the, uh, signal flashing. We tested them all and they work great. I had purchased, um, on the last day of an estate sale and I'm surprised that this was still there because it was a box of Mark's vintage train cars which I have never sold. I didn't know how valuable they were. And I think I had probably about eight or 12 cars and I grouped them together in twos and threes and auctioned them and they sold in the first week. And it was an incredible profit. So if you see the Marks Railroad and they're a decent price, pick them up. They sell really well. And so this is just one of the things that was left. I paid 23 or $20.83 for this little lot here and I sold it for $53. Some of the other uh, cars, I know two of them, I think I sold between two and $300. So, and then some of them were a little bit newer, weren't as old. And I may have sold those for a couple hundred dollars. So the lots were selling between two and $300 for each lot. Next, I have this, um, it was brand new in box, Canon Cano Scan color, color Image Scanner. And so I looked up the comps and they were really good on it. So I, I think they were asking $150. So I put in a bid for $75 along with um, another, I think I bought two more stereo receivers from them as well. So I put in my bid for 75 and they called me the next day and they said, I got it. So I paid $75 for it and I sold it for $390. I probably had it listed for about five or six months. So that was an excellent profit. I sold this um, Cobra uh, CB radio. It's brand new, vintage. I think it's from the eighties or possibly nineties. I paid $5 for it, possibly at a garage sale. I don't really remember picking this up or how long I've had it. I would imagine that I bought it sometime last summer and it sold for $76. Next is this vintage red heart yarn. Um, yarn could be pretty valuable. And you usually can pick it up pretty inexpensively, either at Goodwill, garage sales, or estate sales. People just want to get rid of it and they are selling it anywhere from a quarter to a dollar a piece. So you could do a quick look up to see what the particular one you're looking at is selling for because not all of them sell for decent profit. These, um, this particular color, sold very quickly. I paid, uh, let's see, a dollar for each one of these. I think it was a little bit less than a dollar. I think there were 25 in the bin and she gave them to me for $20. So this is a lot of five and they sold for $50. 
so I have less than five dollars into it. So definitely look out for yarn. Next is this Pendleton blanket. I was at an estate sale, went way up in the attic and they had a few little tools up there and just random things and they had a couple blankets there. And I just thought this was really um, a cool looking blanket. It looked wool to me. It's a waffle style um, blanket. And so I picked it up. It was only $5. It was in decent condition. It looked pretty new, but it looked like it was definitely from the 50s or 60s. So not realizing it was a Pendleton until I got home and really started inspecting all the edges. I saw the Pendleton label on it. So I was very happy. We get Pendleton blankets at our garage sales and estate sales all the time because this is where they're from. All the, the factories are here and all the stores are here. So um, I do pick them up pretty often. So I picked this up for $5 and it sold for 50. The, the, some of the other ones sell for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Next is this pair of Jensen speakers. I think these are from the seventies. They're brand new, went to an estate sale about a year ago, probably not quite a year and picked up so many CBs at this radio, at this uh, estate sale. They used to have a electronic shop on their property and they also repaired electronics and they were in that same area or same house for 60 years or over 60 years, 63 years or something. So they had new in box CB radios that were from the 60s and 70s, 80s and 90s and some little bit newer ones. I pretty much bought all of them. I had so many and they sold very quickly. They were a hot item. So that was such a great sell. But they also had a lot of these speakers hanging up on the rafters in their shop. And so I picked this pair up. I thought they were pretty cool. I paid $10 for them and I sold them for 50 finally. This was one of the very few things that I had left from that sale. So next is this, uh, these two items that I picked up from Goodwill a few months ago. They are sewing patterns. They're called SureFit Designs and they are from 1982. And one is a, uh, I think men's wear and the other is women's. And so they were $3.99 each and I sold them for $40. Next is this Smithsonian war plane. I had picked up um, a very large lot over the summer of uh, war models. They were airplanes and tanks and ships. I have done so well on those. I am so far into the profit now. And so this one sold for $25 and I paid an average of $7.83 for each one. Some of them sold for a couple hundred, some of them sold for 300. So I made back my money very quickly and have just been profiting ever since. Next is this vintage uh, cordless curling iron that I picked up for $3 and it sold for 20. Next is this North Face backpack. It's a 45 liter and I only had this listed for probably a week or two and it sold for $50 and I picked it up for $5 just a few weeks ago in an estate sale. And next is this Britney Spears perfume. I've had this for a while. I paid $4 and I sold it for 15. It's new, it's never been used. It does not have its box so. I am still selling Christmas items. I have this Department 56 Village 
and it sold for $67.99 and I had paid $7.25 for it. And next I sold this Revel California Wheels 49 Mercury Wagon Woody. Um, I paid $12 for it and I sold it for $50. Next is this sewing machine manual. I picked it up for next to nothing, probably 50 cents or less, and I sold it for $15. Next is this vintage Boy Scout sash, and it has, I'm not sure what year it's from. It looks like maybe it might be from 60s or 70s, and it has patches and pins on it. So. I think I paid a few dollars for it and I sold it for 20. Next is this bedspread from Spain. I was on my way home from an estate sale way out in the country and I see this little sign on the side of the road. It says estate sale. Somebody was just putting on their own. I think they were trying to clear out their huge uh, barn that they had. It, it was, uh, I don't even know if I'd call it a barn. It looked more like a shop. It was, bigger than my house and so I started rummaging through some items and I ran across two different bedspreads one was from Spain and one was from Italy and she had told me that her mom bought those in the early 60s and they were new in package they had never been taken out I thought they were really cool and colorful so I just sold my first one I haven't had it listed for very long maybe a couple months I paid five dollars for it and it sold for a hundred and ten so this was the one from Spain so I still have the one from Italy which is equally as beautiful next up is are these uh, rubber stamps it's a lot of over 200 rubber stamps I picked up probably over a year ago um, I made an offer on them the last day of their estate sale and offered $20 and they took it and I think they just oh they went to the other side of Oregon so they're not traveling far so Next is this monogram vintage um, Hellcat plane model kit. I paid $7.83 and I sold it for $25. Next is this Bob Ross paint. And these are um, a lot of 13. They're brand new. So I paid $65 for all of them and I sold them for uh, $189. And that is it. So if you liked this, please hit the like button and subscribe down below. Thank you for watching.